you can simply not break one spaghetti stick into only two pieces, no matter how hard you try. Okay, if you want to do this experiment, go to your kitchen, take one spaghetti stick and try to bend it like this and break it in only two pieces. Actually, you know what? We don't have time for that. I will do that for you and you need to trust me, okay? So I will try to bend it and let's see what happens. Did you see this small piece jumping out? That means that uh, we cannot, we were not able to break this stick into, into two pieces. Um, and this is actually a problem that bothered many uh, scientists and physicists over the last couple of decades. And no matter how benign it looks, it's actually much more complicated. And it was explained only recently what is the only special way that you can bend a stick of spaghetti and break it into only two pieces. Let me take you on one crazy scientific adventure. This is not some trivial phenomenon that should be taken lightly. Even famous physicist Richard Feynman spent years of his life trying to answer this on a first glance simple question. Why you cannot break spaghetti into only two pieces? If you don't know who Richard Feynman is, well, he was one of the brightest minds of 20th century. He was the key player in inventing quantum electrodynamics, which describes the behavior of light and matter. He invented what we call now Feynman diagrams, hieroglyphic scribbles that makes it easier for lesser minds to perform calculations using his theories. Also, he was one of the greatest professors to ever live and teach. Heck, even I use his teaching techniques today. He won Nobel Prize in physics, but he couldn't solve this problem why you cannot break spaghetti in only two pieces. Feynman and his pals try snapping spaghetti underwater, uh, trying to prove that the vibrations that happen during the first snap, uh, so-called snap back effect, will actually cause second crack to happen. But you see, uh, no matter the surrounding uh, of, of the spaghetti, uh, it will always break into more than two pieces. Feynman's famous kitchen experiment remained unsolved until 2005, when a couple of French physicists tried to explain the forces at work when spaghetti or basically anything long rod is bent. They found out when the stick is bent evenly from both ends, it will break near the center, where it's the most curved. The initial break actually does trigger a snapback effect and bending wave or vibration which further fractures the stick. The scientists who explained this annoying feature of spaghetti, Basil Andoloy and Sebastian Neukirch, shared the 2006 Ig Nobel Prize in Physics, not to be confused with the real Nobel Prize, awarded for research that first makes people laugh and then think. But that was not the end. In 2014, Destin Sandlin, American engineer and YouTuber, to you better known as the man behind YouTube channel Smarter Every Day, tried to debunk the theory of two physicists by recording the spaghetti breaking with ultra-fast camera and up to quarter million frames a second. Okay, let's see what he recorded. He argues that the curvature that is created by bending the stick causes so-called cascading fracture. In this phenomena, the bended rod tries to strengthen itself quickly, but it causes even more tension in the opposite direction, causing one more fracture. You see, it's not that I don't believe Destin from Smarter Every Day. I just think that the, the, the research method is a little bit dubious. Or let's say, uh, in science, we shouldn't trust always our senses, no matter how reliable they might seem. And uh, pointing camera, no matter how fast it is, uh, to the physics phenomena and slowing footage down is exactly that. You see, most of the forces around us, uh, they cannot be seen with the naked eye, uh, neither the, the 
best telescope or the really sharpest microscope can catch them. And most of the physics breakthrough uh, are done by the pen and paper and not by uh, just looking at the phenomena. So I continued researching further. The answer, according to new MIT studies, yes, with a twist. In a paper published in 2018 in the Proceedings of National Academy of Scientists, researchers report that they have found a new way to break spaghetti in two by bending and twisting the dry noodles. They carried out experiments with hundreds of spaghetti sticks, bending and twisting them with an apparatus they built specifically for the task. The team found out that the stick is twisted past a certain critical degree, then slowly bent in half, it will against all odds break into exactly two pieces. Two undergraduate students, Ronald Heiser and Edgar Gardiello, were so passionate about the task that they continued researching years after the university course that introduced them that problem. They did some manual tests, tried various things and came up with the idea then when the twisted spaghetti really hard and brought ends together, it seems to work and broke into two pieces, said their professor. But they had to twist them really strongly, and Ronald wanted to investigate more deeply. So Heiser built mechanical fracture device to control the twist and bend sticks of spaghetti. Two clamps on either end of the device hold the stick of spaghetti in place. A clamp at one end can rotate to twist a dry noodle by various degrees, while the other clamp slides toward the twisting clamp to bring two ends of spaghetti together, bending the stick. Hazer and Patil used this device to uh, twist and bend hundreds of spaghetti sticks and observe fragmentation process uh, on a really, really high frame rate, up to 1 million frames a second. In the end, they found that by first twisting the spaghetti at almost 360 degrees and then slowly bringing two clamps together to bend it, the stick snapped exactly in two. The findings were consistent across all types of spaghetti, Barilla number no. 5 and Barilla number no. 7, which have slightly different diameters. In parallel, New scientists that joined the project, Vishal Patil, began to develop a mathematical model to explain how twisting can snap a stick into only two. To do this, he generalized the previous work of French scientists Basil Andoloy and Sebastian Neukirch from the beginning of this story. Patil adapted this theory by adding the element of twisting and then looked at how twists should affect any forces and ways propagating through a stick as it is bent. From his model he found that if a 10 inch long spaghetti stick is first twisted by about 270 degrees and then bent, it will snap into two, mainly due to two effects. The snapback in which the stick will spring back in the opposite direction from which it was bent is weakened in presence of a twist and the twist back where the stick essentially will unwind to its original strengthened configuration releases energy from the rod preventing additional fractures. Once it breaks you still have a snapback because the rod wants to be strengthened, Patil explains, but it also doesn't want to be twisted. Just as a snapback will create a bending wave in which the stick will wobble back and forth, the unwinding generates a twist wave where the stick essentially corkscrews back and forth until it comes to rest. The twist wave travels faster than the bending wave, dissipating energy so the additional critical stress accumulations which might cause subsequent fractures do not occur. This is why you will never get the second break when you twist hard enough, he explains. So this theoretical approach done by MIT scientists uh, using really precise experimental machines actually proves this uh, theory from those French scientists from 2006 with their snapback effect. And once for all, this big spaghetti mystery that even Richard Feynman couldn't solve was debunked and demystified by science. Feynman, who died in 1988, would be delighted to know that the solution to this problem has been found. 
While his most impactful research was at the edge of human knowledge, he truly loved physics and spent much of his time playing with conundra like the broken spaghetti problem. As he said in his best-selling book, Surely You're Joking, Mr. Feynman, he explains the reasons why he picks the projects and problems that he picked in his very rich career. He said it has nothing to do with the uh, development of nuclear physics or maybe theory of relativity. It has to do solely with how fun and interesting this problem is for him. Hey, if you like this video, consider subscribing to this channel. We're preparing an amazing show called Fabric of Life, where we try to demystify using science, uh, classical literature, music and beyond one of the biggest questions that humanity is still struggling with. So if you like crazy adventures, subscribe and see you soon.